Right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, two fantastic things about Elmira. One, there's such awesome people here already. And two, is it seems to attract really awesome people. We're very excited to have two new residents and chiropractors here in town, Dr. Tom and Dr. Sarah, who I know I've been enjoying the treatments and I've talked to some other people who have been as well. And uh, pretty excited about how their philosophy fits together with our spirit chemical. And the owner, Barney, asked me to be here and pretend to be him tonight, so I shaved my head so I could just like him as, as he's in over to do other things this evening. But yeah, very excited to introduce Dr. Tom, who's going to share the four easy steps for creating extraordinary health. So are you excited to learn the four steps? Yeah? All right. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Tom. Alright, and also we need proof that you were here, so I'm going to pass the clipboard if you can uh, just sign, sign your name and let us know who is here. Take it away! The year is 1969. July 21st, 1969 to be exact. And on this day in history, something extraordinary happened. Is anyone around or does anyone know what happened on this day in the street? It's before my time. So not you guys. Anybody else know what happened on this day in the street? Okay, well. You look younger than that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you'll realize why after tonight. But what happened on that day in the street is.
is that you're going to have to make a change in your life. Okay? So, success is not based on luck. And whether you own your own business, money, money, you'll never see it. Or whether you are a personal trainer, you understand that it takes work and that there are certain principles that are involved. And so, I'm going to share some of those principles with you tonight. But first, I'm going to start by telling you my story. And I know you probably look at me and you're like, well, he looks pretty healthy, but there was a time in my life when I wasn't. And who here has kids? Raise your hand. Okay. And would you say that you want the best for your children? Raise your hand. Of course. I've never asked that question and had someone say no. And my parents were no different. My parents, they wanted the best for me. They loved me very much. And that's not to say that they knew exactly what was best for me or understood the principles of health. When I was 10 years old, I thought I was just like all the other kids. I was active in all kinds of sports. Um, I got pretty big grades. And I thought I was kind of cool. But it wasn't. There was something that separated me from all the other kids. And over time, it created a bigger gap. And it led to some problems in my life. And the problem was I couldn't sleep through the night. I couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't stay asleep. And for a 10-year-old kid, that's pretty big because most 10-year-olds get the pillow in their head. But for me, it led to anxiety. And I kept thinking about it over and over again. And this went on for months. Eventually, I got to the point where I started to get detached from myself and my friends. And at the same time, if you're not sleeping at night, your grades catch your first sleep in school. You can focus. So my mom, being the lovely lady that she is, she said, well, let's do something about this. So she took me to the medical doctor. And the medical doctor said, well, no go And she took me to the massage therapist. And even drank ham mild tea with me at night and listened to the house songs. So as a last resort, she took me to her car. And I was 10 years old, so all I remember is looking at the view box and seeing my x-rays. And I thought that was pretty cool. I started under care. And a few things changed. I started to get better grades in school. I was more focused. I started to have a better relationship with my friends. And last but not least, I started sleeping through the night. And so I continued to go to the chiropractor on and off because deep down I knew it was a good thing for me. I didn't really know why. And it helped with my school in the entrance. So fast forward, I just finished high school I'm 18 years old. And at this point in my life, I had to make a decision. I'm going to be a We've all been there. What do I do next? So I was talking to some of the guys that played baseball with, and they were like, oh, we're going down to the States, down to Rochester, New York, to play baseball. And I thought, well, that seems like a cool opportunity. Maybe I'll join. So I did. I went down there. And we started practicing two times a day, two day practices. And after three weeks, I knew I was in trouble. There was a problem. And I needed to make a change in my life. After only three weeks, I dropped 35 pounds, and I started having shoulder problems and elbow problems, and it got to the point where I was depressed and I hit the lowest point in my life. If it wasn't for a counselor at school helping me out, giving me some direction, I don't think I'd be here today. Looking back, I knew what my vision was for my life and what I wanted. But I hadn't actually mapped it out. I didn't know what the blueprint was for my life. And so he gave me some direction. I went back to Canada. I went to my student role in kinesiology. And needless to say, my health problems didn't change. They went to the other end of the spectrum. So, like any young man, this is me in Rochester at the American Medical College. And I was probably about 160 pounds there. And when I went down there, I was about 180 pounds. And back to Western, I, like any young man, I thought, oh, well, I need to be big, tall, and strong, just like Arnold. I want muscles coming out of my ears. 
Needless to say, I started to eat and eat and eat and train and lift weights. I was in the body world. Go to the gym multiple times a day and come home and I would eat past Try and get as many calories as I could. Bread, oatmeal, shakes, I was doing everything. And I look pretty good. Now, don't laugh. <laughs> so, this is me, and I'm probably about 200 pounds here. Right? My first year of university. <laughs> and I look pretty good. <laughs> I look good on the outside, but was I necessarily healthy? I'm going to say no, because how I felt was a different story. And I would eat, eat, and at the end of the day, I would be crunched over in the ball because I was having such bad cramps. And needless to say, after eating and eating, I was on the toilet six to ten times a day. And being a kinesiology student, I actually calculated the average calories I was taking in a day, and it was probably five to six thousand calories. Now, to give you perspective, the average North American recommended for the food pyramid to take in about two thousand pounds. And last but not least, I was burned out. I was in university, but I could fall asleep standing up anywhere. I was suffering from adrenal fatigue, and I was just completely burnt out. So thankfully, somewhere along, along the lines between here and now, someone taught me a few principles, and these principles changed my life. And tonight I'm going to share with you a few of these principles, okay? The reason I tell you my story is not because chiropractic is a cure for insomnia. Chiropractic is not a cure for anything. We'll touch on that one later. The reason I tell you this story is not because bodybuilding is bad, but if you look at Arnold then and now, maybe we'll have second thoughts. <laughs> I got caught up in what I thought health was, but I was misinformed. And my health was a reflection of
Now, if you're training with Pam and you're starting to get a little bit healthier, you're going to go back to Pam and ask, well, what do I do next? And Pam's going to look at you and say, we'll do it again. Because it's a principle. And if you're in the shower, I like to use this example, what do you do in the shower? And it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> but you scrub in the shampoo in your hair, rub it all up, and then what do you do after? You rinse it out. I didn't ask you. Pick it on the bottle. And then if you were to read the bottle, what does the bottle say? Rinse in. Repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Do it over. And if we had a salad for lunch today, does that mean that we're healthy and we never have to have a salad again? No. We recognize that salad is good for us now, and it's good for us forever. And we know if we do the wrong things that eventually we're going to get sick. Personally, I have been touched, and many people in here may be touched as well by someone with cancer. We've all experienced that to some degree or another. And if you go on the American Cancer Society's website, they're one of the most conservative cancer societies in the world. If you go check out their website, I encourage you to do so. You'll see that greater than 95% of all cancers are due to lifestyle and environmental factors. Not genetics. So less than five percent of cancers are due to genetics, genetics, which is scary, but at the same time empowering because you're the driver's seat, and you are ultimately in control about the quality of your life as well as the longevity. Unless you happen to just step out onto the street and get hit by a car, in that case you're not the driver's seat. The body is designed to be amazing, and cells are constantly reproducing themselves. We're shedding skin all the time, and our cells are being renewed. We have a brand new stomach lining every three days, a new, li a new liver every six weeks, and now you're like, I see time. Every six weeks we have a new liver, and every three to seven years, depending on what research you look at, 98% of the cells in the body are completely so if you've been married for, let's say, how many years? 15. 15 years. Then you're already on your second wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I want everyone to make a fist now. Hold up a fist. And I want you to look at one square inch on that fist. So in one square inch, there's 77 feet of your hands. Pretty amazing, right? The nervous system is the master control system of the body. And so the food you make today is being converted in your body and it's making your nails grow longer. It's giving you new skin and making your hair grow too. <laughs> the reason this happens is because the body is intelligent. There's an inborn intelligence within us all. And I call it innate intelligence. Some people might call that God. Other people, biological intelligence. But that's what's taken us from this sperm here and this egg. Two cells and created you. 70 trillion cells. So I have a question for you. If the body is designed to be amazing and the body is constantly renewing itself, rejuvenating itself, healing itself, then why do we continue to be sick and get more well? Why does the body continue to move down that wrong path and create a disease. Because we rinse and repeat. The body creates itself in the image of itself. But the body is designed to be well. In our office, we use this analogy all the time. So if you've been to our office, you might have heard this already. We use the analogy of a plant. And many of us, if we're a farmer, we work with plants. If we have a garden, we work with plants. And let's pretend that this here is our prize. And we come home one day, and it looks like this. It's all built up. Let me ask you, what's the first thing you can do? Give it a drink. Okay, you gave it a drink. That didn't change. You think what next? Sunlight. Sunlight. Okay. Anyway. 
Anybody else? Throw it out. Sorry. Throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not for all. Okay. Change the soil. Change the soil, right. So all the things that we just listed there, these are requirements for this plant to be healthy. It needs water, sunlight, soil, carbon dioxide. And the first question we ask is, what does this plant need? But, if I were to substitute this plant for a human, and you went to your doctor looking like this, <laughs> all wilted and not feeling good, what is the first question that you, you like to find out? That you usually ask, Doctor, what do I, what do I have? What's wrong with me? Exactly. And in that case, I would look at the plant and I would say, Oh, this plant is wilted, and I see a brown leaf here. So my diagnosis is that this plant has brown leaf ulcers. <laughs> <laughs> and we get caught up in naming things and giving things a name. But that doesn't really get us any further ahead, does it? And many people get attached to their symptom or condition, and they identify with it. You know, I have cancer, I have fibromyalgia, I have this, that. And there's nothing wrong with that, but people start to identify with it, and it becomes that. But you are not your disease or condition or symptom. So I want to ask you a question. Why didn't you say that you would give this plan to us? So that doesn't make any sense. That's why the room is silent. Does it make any sense? The plant doesn't need drugs to be healthy. And there is a time and a place for drugs. But we recognize over time, we as human beings, taking drugs doesn't make us healthy. It's just a quick fix. So we have to determine what it is that's causing us to look like this. And oftentimes it's stress in our lives. Stress comes from many different areas in our lives. And we have two options. We can either manage the stress, or we can increase our body's ability to adapt to stress. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to stop working out. I don't want to stop playing, doing sports and activities. I don't want to give up any stress in my life. Do you guys? No? Exactly. So the other option is to increase our body's ability to adapt. And I like to use the analogy of a juggler. So I'm juggling three balls. And then you guys toss me another one. And another one. And another one. And I keep going, I'm at about 20 now. I'm doing pretty good. And then you throw me one more. And what happens? Do I drop one ball? Or do I drop them all? I drop them all, exactly. And so we want to increase your body's ability to juggle on a daily basis. We don't want to decrease the number of balls you have in here because we all have a life to live. So, you said you would have water. Now, if the plant continued to look like this, even after you added water, is it still healthier with the water? Yes, yes it is. And the same goes for us. If we make a change in our life that's a positive one, moving us in the right direction, we're healthier no matter what. So I'm gonna talk about those principles more that are gonna move us in that direction. And I'm going to give you a blueprint so that we're on the same page, on the same path. Because many of us, we get caught up in the next quick fix. We watch Dr. Oz or the doctors, and they're talking about that next fabulous workout or that next herb or remedy that's going to change our life. But these things are just quick fixes. And they may change blood markers. They may cause physiological change in your body. But they're not fundamental requirements for your body to be healthy. So here's a graph, and along the side is 0 to 100, and 0 to minus 100. And if we're up here, we're living at 100% health. And so these are all the requirements for health. And these are all the stresses in our lives. On this page, there's drugs, sitting, sugar, pollution, work, relationships. So we want to make sure we're moving in the right direction. And there's hundreds and hundreds of requirements for health. We could just start listing them off right now. And the problem is, we get lost. It's way too complex. So we need to make this simple. And we're going to focus on four requirements. And these four requirements, if you were to fill these four requirements, your default state will be health. There's no other option. You're automatically healthy. 
So health is not a destination. Health is a journey. And we need to take the first step. And health is a journey of a thousand steps. And tonight may be your first step. You may already be doing some of these things. And if so, give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. But I want you to focus on maybe something that you haven't heard before. Or something that you can change. So I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes going over this. And by the end, I'm going to make a big commitment. Okay? So remember that. And it's not just you. There's other people here who are going to help you. Okay? So you're going to be committing to maybe taking action in your life. But there's awesome trainers in this room. Awesome doctors and people who can help you along that trip. They've done a study with Olympic athletes, and they've taken these Olympic athletes who they train all the time, right? They're in fantastic physical health. And they said, You can't move for 24 hours. And after only 24 hours of their body not moving, their body went into a state of stress. That's kind of shocking, right? Because how many people here sit at a desk when they work or come home and sit on the couch? You may or may not have heard this, but they've said that sitting is the next smoking. And working out one hour a day doesn't offset the negative effects of sitting for six hours straight. So you're like, what am I going to do? <laughs> That's why we need to have strategies involved. So I'm going to teach you some principles tonight and a few strategies, but it's up to you to go and take those strategies and make them unique to you because it's going to be unique to every individual person. So that could be if you're sitting at work six hours a day, getting up and walking around every half hour, doing some stretches. I know at the Toyota plant, because they're a Japanese affiliate, they have to stretch three times a day. And I think that's fantastic. And we should all be doing the same thing. The other thing, you're doing some attractive exercise. Just something to keep moving. So first off, being mobile. Every joint in our body needs to move optimally, but not too much or too well. And this needs to happen on a daily basis. So some things that, some strategies that we can use to become more mobile are yoga, stretching, walking, Joint to joint mobility, range of motion, all of these things. The next one, lift heavy. Now, I know some of the women are already thinking, oh, don't go there. <laughs> but I want to let you know that strong is sexy. And that whether you're four or 94 years old, you're better off if you're strong. It doesn't matter. No matter what, you're better off. Let me give you an example. If we have someone who's weak and deconditioned and they're not eating good food, they don't have good self-esteem, versus someone who is very strong, they're working out, they're moving, they're eating the right foods, they have a good brain-body connection. Put these two people in a car and they get the same car accident. Who's going to be less hurt and who's going to heal faster? The stronger person every time. Moving fast. So this is not an indictment on people who like to use the treadmill. But have you ever seen someone on the treadmill? And then a year later we see them on the treadmill again and nothing's changed. The reason is our body needs to move fast. And interval training is one of the best things that you can do for your body to speed up fat burning and build muscle at the same time. So that could be 20 to 30 minutes of high intensity movement. Moving slow. Now, a lot of us are like, well, every time I want to go to the gym, I want to lift as much weight as I can. It's always a competition, but there's a time and a place to just move slow. And this could be spending time with your family, going for a walk, playing with your kids, going for a bike. This is all important for you psychologically as well as physically. Our mental state is important for our physiological state, and our physiological state is important for our psychological state. They're both interrelated. It's not all in your head. So the stress that you are feeling, the emotional stress affects your body and vice versa. 
So the first one up here, belief system, is probably the most important one. That's why it's number one. And if you believe that the body is designed to be effective, that we're designed to eventually get sick and be unwell, where do you think we're going to be? We're going to be sick, we're going to be on medication, and we're not going to be healthy. Versus, if we believe the body is designed to be extraordinary, healthy, and that health is our default state, where do you think we'll be there? Our beliefs drive our actions. So, if we don't believe in what we're doing, then our actions are going to follow suit. And we need to have our belief system aligned to reality, because many times we don't really know why we believe something. It, it may have been from when we were growing up, we heard our mother say, the old wives tale or a preacher, some, someone had said something and it just stuck in your mind, but we don't really understand why. And it's important that it's aligned with reality and it's true. Because if I believe that exercise isn't good for me, and the, that I don't need exercise to be healthy, then that's just not true. And if I believe that I don't need to eat good food, good food to be healthy, that's not true either. And if I don't believe that I need a properly functioning brain and nervous system, healthy, then that's not true. Self-esteem, we need to love ourselves. We need to have confidence. Number three is very important, and it's why I'm here tonight. Because we need to have a vision. And our vision is to make Elmira the healthiest community in Canada. And our vision lines up with pinnacles, which is why I'm here tonight. So we need to map that out and understand where we're going. We need to understand the why behind the why. Why are we doing what we're doing? And sometimes that takes a little bit more research. It takes us coming up to a talk, sitting down and listening, understanding what we're doing, and then questioning and going back and doing more research. It's like in school. If our teacher and our parents just say we've got to do our homework, we don't really care to do our homework, right? <laughs> we need to understand that our vision and our why is that maybe someday we want to be an engineer and doing our math is good. And then last but not least, this is the most important one of all. And we need to take action. So let me leave you with a little quote. If you do nothing, you get nothing. That's crazy. <laughs> if you do nothing, you get nothing. So if you leave here tonight and you don't make a change in your life, then the only person who wins. If I were to walk up to you on the street and ask you, how important is your spine and your nervous system for health? What would you say? Don't answer that question. Important, right? We all agree it's very important. <clears throat> Has anyone here remember Christopher Reeves? Superman? And what happened to Christopher Reeves? He had spinal cord injury, right? And his legs weren't broken, but he couldn't walk, right? And does anyone know why Christopher Reeves ultimately passed away? I'll, I'll tell you why. Eventually, he passed away because his body couldn't fight off a bug that you and I would fight off. No his immune system was compromised because his nervous system didn't work. So the problem is, most people already have a story about chiropractic. They've either been to a chiropractor or they've heard what a chiropractor does. And the reason why I asked you that question, how important is your brain and your nervous system in your health, is because that's what chiropractic is. Insert chiropractic here. I'm going to say next, Dr. Bruce is probably going to shake his head. <laughs> the thing is, you don't need chiropractic. You don't need chiropractic. The truth is, you need a healthy and properly functioning brain and nervous system. And the only strategy to fulfill this requirement is chiropractic at this point in time. Now, other professions may adjust or manipulate to try and treat or cure something, but chiropractic is the only thing that increases the brain-body connection. Now, 
the next one is most people's favorite. And it's also the most misunderstood, as well as the most understood in some cases. And this one can make a huge impact on your life because we tend to do this one multiple times a day, over and over again. The problem is that most people get caught up in what food should I be eating? Should I be vegetarian? Should I eat meat? Should I go paleo? And we should be focusing on this. These are all the wrong things to focus on. What we should focus on are the requirements for health. And the requirements for a human being, if we're speaking about diet, and diet just means what a certain species needs to survive when they're eating, is a human being needs protein, fat, and micronutrients. Now you're probably looking at it. What about carbohydrates? Well, there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate because your body can take fat and protein and create glycogen and glucose in your liver, which are carbohydrates, which your body can come up with. So if we take an animal and we take them out of the natural environment, we put them in a zoo, and they've done studies where they've done this. They put an animal in a zoo and they start feeding them different food and occasional life. What happens to that animal? It's sick every time. They've taken that same animal and put them back in their natural environment. And every single time they get healthy. Why? Because they're eating the right food again. And they're moving. They're living in their natural state. So the first principle of eat by the sign is simple. Eat real food. Now, I'm not changing anyone's life by saying that. But eat real food. Real, real food does not have a barcode. <laughs> How many ingredients does real food have? Does anybody know? How many ingredients does real food have? One. Exactly. Carrots. Broccoli. Pork. Beef. It's easy. The next one. Eat some protein with every meal. I'm going to tell you a story about my cousin. And she went off to university and wanted to make a change in her life. She was into exercise, fitness, and she decided that she wanted to cut meat out of that. She wanted to be a vegetarian. So she started eating some more pasta, bread. And the outcome was every night she would be curled up in a ball because she was in such terrible pain. Eventually, after months of this, she had lost so much weight, she went to her doctor. And her doctor said, after some blood tests, they realized that she is allergic to gluten. So he, he gave her a name, celiac disease. The point is, she continued on as a vegetarian. But did she get any healthier? No, she continued to lose weight. She continued to exercise and exercise. But she could continue to slide down the wrong path. And it wasn't until she learned some basic principles and learned about what her body needs to eat that she started adding some cold water fish to her diet and the occasional egg. And this changed her life for the better. So now she's actually a health and wellness coach. And she does coaching in Florida, BC and helps people all the time with these things. The last one, fat does not make you fat. Now, this all started back in the 70s and 80s when we got on the no fat kick and we went from butter to margarine, we started eating low fat crackers, all of these things. And the reason why this happened was because of one study. And this study was called the 16 Country Study and it's written by a guy named Ansel Keys. Now, Ansel Keys went around to 16 countries and they did a demographic study of all the people, what they're eating, how healthy they are, and how long their lives are. And what they found out was the more saturated fat intake you have, the shorter your lifespan and the increased risk of heart disease. What they failed to tell you was there was actually 23 countries in that study. They left out seven. And when they went back and did the statistical analysis, they found that there was no correlation 
between saturated fat and longevity. So, when it comes to fat, we need to recognize that it's a requirement for health. And an example could be avocado. It's a great source of fat. Coconut. And what I like to do is I build my meals around the protein. So I think, okay, well, I'm going to start with fish, poultry, or eggs, and I'm going to add some vegetables, and then I'm going to throw some fat on Now, that probably doesn't sound weird if you can, but... <laughs> There's a large amount of pressure on the neck of the child 
whether it's being pulled out by forceps or the hands of the doctor. And the average pressure is 15 to 120 pounds per square inch. Now, if anyone knows how much pressure you put in your car tires, it's between 33 and 36 pounds, depending on what you drive. So this child starts his life, and perhaps the child is given eye drops to begin with, and the child perhaps can't breastfeed. And so we know right away that if a child doesn't breastfeed, that their immune system is already less. Research shows that children who breastfeed have increased immunity. And so right away, they're more likely to get sick and have colds, ear infections. And what's going to happen when they have these things? Medication, drugs, exactly. Antibiotics for the years. And there's about 200,000 cases of viral ear infections per year in Canada. And antibiotics are prescribed for them, but we recognize that viral infections don't respond to antibiotics. So we're increasing antibiotic resistance. And this child ends up with some auditory issues, hearing problems. And so the child has slower learning and might be a little bit delayed developmentally. And so when the child gets to school, maybe they have a hard time making friends and paying attention in class. And this child can't focus. And they're at home, they're playing video games. And instead of playing with their friends, they start to keep to themselves. And maybe they're eating processed foods, soft drinks, chips, cola, and they start gaining weight. So fast forward, now we're 17 or 18, and this child is on Ritalin or Adderall. A class two in the same class as cocaine. And this child is kind of floundering in life, doesn't know what the next step is, doesn't know where to go. Now this kid's 22, 23 years old, and I've only been in practice a short time, but it's amazing to see, and it's astonishing and scary, the number of people who are on antidepressants. And so, people are on antidepressants, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. There's a time and place, if you need a drug to help you along, that's perfect, but we recognize over time that this doesn't make us healthier. So now we're in our 30s, starting to go over the hill about 40 years old, and the next drug is a cholesterol drug, a statin. And they've done lots of research on statins. And the thing about statins is they do lower your cholesterol. They do. But you die at the same rate as everybody else. So you might have lower cholesterol, or you're going to die just like everybody else. The other thing about statins is they decrease your body's ability to absorb cholesterol. And that might only be a small percentage. But cholesterol is a requirement for your health. It's a nutrient for your brain. It's important for your brain function. And so many people get depressed on statins. That's the number one side effect. And the other side effect is suicide. So now we're on a statin. The next step is a slippery slope. We start to go down. A beta blocker, antihypertensive. And this goes on and on. Nine out of ten people over the age of 60 are on a prescription drug. So that means if you have a room of a thousand people, <coughs> 900 out of those a thousand are on a drug. And like I said, I'm not against drugs, but there's a time and a place. And this doesn't just apply to elderly people. This applies to everybody. 50% of the population is on a prescription drug, no matter what age. So if we step in the other direction, a different path, we have a child who has a natural birth, and it doesn't even have to be at home, it could be in a hospital. The child is born naturally, and this child breastfeeds, so right away their immune system gets a boost. And the child supplements with a high quality omega-3, important for brain health. 
This child gets her spine checked from birth. They have a healthy brain body connection. And this child is given a chance to move and play. So this child grows up and they're active in sports. And they do well in class. They're focused. Fast forward to 17, 18, and this child is becoming a grown up. They have a vision, they have a purpose for their life. They know where they want to go. They're active. Now they're 22, 23, and they're making great decisions for their life. They're checking and correcting, checking and correcting, rinsing and repeating, and they're, they have a great relationship, and they have a great future. So the reason why I have the Hoff up here, for those of you who are wondering, is at some point we have to face reality. And the great thing about reality is it affects us all. And so, just because I'm the speaker up here talking to you, doesn't mean I know so all the real. Right? If I believe that I go jump off the top of this building and I'm going to hurt myself, I'm dead wrong. I'm going to get hurt just like you and just like you. So, we have to face reality at some point. And the reality is, the reality is that nobody is coming to save you. That's a strong statement. And it's scary. But no one's come to save you. The choices you make and the life you live is up to you. The hawk isn't running down the beach to save you. The guy on the white horse from the Old Spice commercial, he's not coming to save you. So at some point, we, we have to look in the mirror. We have to look at our reflection. And for some of us, this might be hard. Because that reflection is an accumulation of all the choices we have made up at this point in time in our life. But like I said, the main part is you're in the driver's seat. You're in control of the quality and the quantity of your life. So you can make a change. And the thing is with most people, they go about their life and do things, they don't really understand why. And so, they can't really get into trouble because they don't know why. Right? But the thing is, now you know. So now you know. And you can't say, well, I didn't know, because now you know. So I don't want you to take what I'm saying tonight for face value. I want you to go out and do your own research, ask questions, talk to your trainers, talk to your doctors. And if I found out that any of these principles weren't true, then I would make a change because I'm on a quest to live an extraordinary life. Now, many people ask me, when should I start? When do you guys think you should start? <laughs> now, when you're born. And we have people in our practice, and they're getting their spines checked, and they ask, well, when should I bring my child in to get their spine checked? And I say, well, when do you take your child to the dentist? And they say, it's the 15th. And I ask, well, do they have a spine? And they say, yes. And I'm like, well, great. Let's get them checked. It's a requirement. And then we have other people, of course, say, you know, I'm overweight, I don't feel good, I'm not healthy, I'm older, when do I start? And I say, today. Start today. So the take home messages, we can go in one direction or the other. We can choose to be healthy, or we can choose to be sick. And the choices we make move us in one direction or the other. There is no neutral. So, like I said, I'm going to get you to make a commitment today. And if you don't buy into this, or anything I'm saying, then you're making a commitment. You're making a commitment to be unhealthy. So, for some of you, you might be doing a few of these things already. And that's great, give yourself out of that, good job. And for some of you, this might seem a little bit overwhelming. Like a lot. So, we're going to start with something simple. Something you heard today. Pick the lowest hanging fruit and start with that. It could be as simple as eating protein with your breakfast tomorrow. So, if it's the movement requirement, you have enough movement in your life, then there's fantastic trainers here at Pinnacle. We have Pam here, Jeremy was here. And these people are going to help move you towards fulfilling those requirements. And they're going to give you strategies specific to you to help you fulfill those requirements. If it's the mindset, 
your mental state, then I want you to think about this one question. Now, it might sound generic, but it's very powerful. What do I want with my life? What do I want for my life? So write this down. Maybe do it and meditate. Think about what you want so you can start creating that vision for your life. If it's food you're struggling with, eating, I suggest you start with number one. Eat real food. It's so simple. Eat real food. Go home, go to your pantry, and everything that has a label on it, throw it in a box. Take that box and hide it. Get rid of it. Donate it if you have to. It's too bad about the people you're donating it to, but hey. <laughs> Start with that. Commit to 30 days to making a change. And I know the first couple weeks might be the hardest, but after that, I think it's easier. And if it's the spine and nervous system, now I know some of you are already getting your spine and nervous system checked, but I want you to see one of two people. And for me, getting my spine and nervous system properly checked was one of the most powerful things I could do. And like I said, when I started chiropractic care, I was on and off, on and off. But when I started to fully apply those principles, I finally got reconnected and my life changed. So if you'd like to find out more, or you'd like to schedule an appointment, an examination, then you can see Maria after. She'll get you booked in. And there, there's a special outreach fee because we want you not to procrastinate moving forward, okay? So, before we leave, I have a math equation for you, okay? Now, pull out your calculators. If you have a fault, that's great. Does everyone have a fault here or something that they can calculate this equation on? No? Okay. Well, for those of you who do, Leonard's going to do it on paper here. Good for you. I want you to take 84 and subtract your age. So 84 minus your current age. Okay? And then once you've done that, multiply that by 365. Okay, I'll give you a second so you can all, you can all do it. Because I'm going to come around and ask you, what's your number? What's your number? Just gotta make sure you're the boss.